is a star that lights the road I take this ride Hello, welcome back to the Circuit de Catalunya and to the notebook for day two of the second test. We're going to start with the midfield. Um, we're going to start with Sauber actually, but I just noticed something. Look at the cold cuts uh, available for the Sauber mechanics at dinner. Looks lovely. A bit of beef carpaccio, parmesan, a bit of squid there. Can you see that? Peppers. Very healthy. And look at that. It's just a, a bananas and everything on show there. So um, interesting day um, for Sauber because they uh, revealed, given that they just put it on the car and we saw that they have a rear wing. Uh, stalling device you know the um, some people call it a double DRS but it's actually independent to DRS it's a rear wing stalling device which actually um, uh, stalls the rear wing and gives the car a straight line speed boost the only problem is that you've got to be careful when you use it because you don't want to go stalling the rear wing in the middle of the corner when you need the downforce you want to do it on the straight when you don't need the downforce and that means you dump the drag Lotus couldn't get it working last year um, but Sauber have now turned up with a version they haven't got it quite working yet. I spoke to Matt Morris, the chief designer, and um, he said that uh, it, it, it does need more development. But you have to be careful you don't put, he said, uh, too much resource into it because it's a bang for buck thing and it means that actually you might find you're spending too much time and too much money on it whereas you could find bigger gains elsewhere so something interesting um, nice view if you can just come back Pete a bit and just see into the uh, the Sauber uh, meeting room and um, I just wanted to ask uh, Tom McCulloch who's the uh, head of race engineering a question who's just to get him out of his office hello Tom hello. Um, now I don't understand a drivers often say okay we, we've got all this testing we've done all all, all, all this running, we're going to have to go through the data. And people think, you know, testing is actually quite easy. Come to Spain, Barcelona, go out nice, have a nice glass of Rioja at the end of the day. But w w what do you do in these, in these, in these debriefs all, all evening? Yeah, so, so basically, as the car's running, the car's got sensors all over it, measuring all the forces, displacement, ride heights, pressure tappings from the aero. We go out in a very uncontrolled environment on the racetrack where the tyres are degrading um, and also the conditions, the wind changes. So the driver goes out, does the lap times, gathers the data. We then come back in the truck at the end of the day, go through each run and just trying to understand whether all the bits we've tested on the car, for example, a new front wing or a new rear wing, have a look to see that whether the driver comments, the data from all the sensors that are on the car all tie up to make sure that we understand what we've done. Um, so we can put the right bits on the car and sort of move forward. Okay, so you're running many, many more sensors in testing than you were during the race. That's right. We, we run a lot of sensors on the car um, in a race weekend nowadays, but also in the test you have a lot more freedom. The weight isn't as much of a problem, so you can put more and more instrumentation on uh, and gives you uh, better information. Okay, and you're also finally trying things that you just haven't got time to do during a race weekend so sort of crazy setups are you and things that you think well you know we can't do this at a race because we're never going to make the end of the practice session yeah for, for sure testing is very limited nowadays and at a race weekend as you know we only get very few sets of tires and within each session uh, you tend to have just one spec of each tire and the track conditions change a lot so testing allows you to put back to back the same spec of tires and, and be much more rigid in your systematic in your testing to get better understanding of some of the things we're doing okay tom thank you very much we'll let you go back uh, into your briefing room um so interesting there and also uh, uh, as we can just see um into the briefing room as the door opens and they'll be there sort of long into the night uh, discussing with both drivers actually uh, Esteban Gutierrez can you see the little traces on the computer oh the doors shut oh just got a glimpse of it um, with Gutierrez and Hulkenberg to see uh, what they come up with but um, I just find that quite interesting they are long days and now nights for the guys let's just um, wrap up uh, and Sauber looking pretty good actually we just just must say that they still need to find a bit of time Nico Hulkenberg was complaining about the tyres, but it is cold here and he thinks it might 
improve uh, for Melbourne. But um, yeah, Samba looking like pretty much where they were, sort of solid midfield team. Marusha uh, down there, can we see any of their trucks? Not really in the fading gloom. Um, Good day for Max Chilton. Uh, he didn't really manage to do any setup work. Uh, he did lots of constant speed runs uh, on the limiter. They have presets for that, so the driver doesn't have to just go to his sort of speed readout and then keep to it. They have a limiter, so he just goes to a preset uh, set speed to do his uh, run so that the sensors we've just been talking about can measure all the downforce uh, on the car and just measure that it's doing what it should be. But um, they did some quick runs at the end. Max Chilton's quickest run was a 25-1 versus the quickest lap of the day, a 21.8. So I don't think that's too bad um, for Marusha. I think they're probably still going to be uh, towards the back of the field. Who's this about to run me over down here? Is that Fernando? It is Fernando. Wouldn't that be so... Getting run over by Fernando Alonso wouldn't be quite as bad as getting run over by... I was going to name another driver there, but I, I won't. But anyway... Um, <laughs> So Fernando Alonso still got another day, actually, uh, in the car. But he's, he's had a, 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 another very solid day. But I, I, I found his comments, just while we're talking about him, I found his, his comments yesterday slightly um, disappointing on, on his behalf. He said uh, the, the positive things were that he's relatively confident that Ferrari will be able uh, to find speed and improvements before Melbourne, but that they have a lot of work to do. And really, I get the feeling that if they were going to a race with the, the, uh, the car that they have now, it would be a bit disappointing compared to McLaren, Red Bull and Lotus. So he's really sort of putting, uh, managing expectations uh, for people and, and, and just pointing out to everybody, Ferrari not least, that needs to put some more downforce on that car. He said the car was a continuation of the car that he had in Brazil, which, um, you know, given that, you know, Mercedes have found you know, a second, as Nico Rosberg told us yesterday, uh, in their car, then um, I thought that was a bit disappointing. It hasn't actually been written up as that, but, um, well, we will see anyway. Uh, I was just talking about Marussia. Yeah, just to finish off uh, that, um, it's not... So uh, Max Chilton hasn't done uh, any setup work yet. He hasn't played around with actually getting the car perfectly to his liking. So we will see um, what kind of time he can do when he has that. Couple of helmets. Lovely. Look at them. Little Nico Rosberg uh, miniature helmets. What do you call two helmets in a row? Waiting to get them signed. Well, he's standing by Nico's bike, so he's standing in the right place. Um, Force India next. Another cracked exhaust. They had a cracked exhaust, I seem to remember, in... Uh... I was going to say so. I won't say it, Pete. <laughs> She seems to like you, not me. Um, uh, they had another cracked exhaust. They had one in, uh, in Jerez. Um, Paul was quite defensive when Craig Slater from Sky Sports News asked him about it. He was like, yeah, well, I'm not going to tell you about it. Well, being sort of quite secret squirrel about it. I wonder, it's Aldo Costa, ciao. For the uh, guys um, from Mercedes, who's actually uh, masterminded this year's car. So he must be feeling happy with himself. Um, so Paul DeResta, yeah, feeling that it wasn't a recurring reliability problem, we will see. Um, but it's, it's difficult with this second driver thing. Paul saying it doesn't make any difference to me who the second driver is. If Force India want to go for Jules Bianchi and the support that he has from Ferrari, do they want to throw away their relationship, their working relationship with Mercedes and indeed by extension, perhaps McLaren, I don't know if it's mutually exclusive, um, and then go and be a sort of customer Ferrari team, all for Jules Bianchi. Maybe that's why they want to get Adrian Suttil, who's been around in the paddock. Today, there is Roman Grosjean. So let's just uh, cover Lotus uh, quickly. Um, took time to identify their gearbox problems uh, today. It's all right, Pete. No, I was just knocked you. I didn't mean I wanted to... I was just looking at the time. Sorry, eight minutes. Um, it took time to identify their gearbox problems today, and they lost the time accordingly. Uh, they put a new gearbox on, and it was fine. Kimi Raikkonen and then Julie went out and did the third fastest time. But Grosjean, lucky boy. Look at that. Oh, he's got, he got MacBook Air. He has. Oh, very nice. Um, he's had all the good reliability. Kimi Raikkonen has had dreadful reliability over the, the four days that he's had in the E21 so far. So um, uh, he came out immediately after they sorted the gearbox and then set the third fastest time of the day. So clearly the speed is there. 
uh, for Raikkonen, but it was slightly disappointing uh, from them. Um, Mercedes, uh, they did a back-to-back -back with the old exhaust, the, 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 the old Coanda exhaust. Now, I thought this was um, slightly alarming when I saw it first because, uh, you know, you don't see any of the other teams with brand new Coanda style exhaust suddenly putting their old non-Coanda exhausts on to do a back-to-back. -back. I thought it might be a sign that uh, they're not confident that their new exhausts are doing what they want, but I've since looked into it more and found out they just wanted to be absolutely sure. They wanted to, to, to get the tyre temperatures because with their Coanda exhaust last year, it wasn't working. It was deflecting the exhaust onto the rear tyres and overheating the rear tyres. So they wanted to be absolutely certain. Not her again, is it, Pete? Uh, they wanted to be absolutely certain that the new Coanda exhaust weren't overheating the rear tyres. And they seemed to be certain. And Lewis Hamilton had a very good day. A great lap by Lewis Hamilton on the hard tyre. Uh, when we asked him, which you probably already heard, uh, he sort of downplayed it a bit. But um, I think they're looking pretty good uh, nonetheless. We talked about Lotus. Kimi Raikkonen also saying that it's unfair to blame the tyres uh, because everyone's saying you've only got one decent lap in these tyres and then they start to go off. So you have to do all your evaluation l runs uh, that we were talking about with Tom, the engineer, uh, a little earlier on the first lap to see if a new part works because after the second lap, the tyres are just going to grain, degrade, and you're not going to know, get any sort of value judgment as to whether the the, uh, the parts that you put on are particularly good. Caterham, um, interesting day for Charles Pick. He was running pretty much full tanks or heavy fuel all day um, because they wanted to show him what Kurs was like, of course he's never run Kurs before, uh, on differing loads of fuel. So they set the slowest time of the day, but they weren't really looking uh, for lap times because it was all about familiarizing um, Charles Pick with the Kerr system. 11 minutes, so just not too long to go. Let's go and have a look at some round the back of some trucks, shall we? As we talk about McLaren, um, Sergio Perez saying that he's uh, improved his comfortability. I love the word comfortability. Uh, trademark Sergio Checo Perez. Uh, they've improved the car's comfort from the Hareth test, and it feels almost natural uh, now. I like that phrase, almost natural. So he's got some way to still feeling a natural. And I wondered how different it can be. How different can a Sauber sitting in a Sauber be to sitting in a McLaren? Anyway, we'll look into that story a bit later. But he also said um, we still have some work to do, which I thought um, was quite interesting. Some nice tyres. Uh, laid out here and um, we've got a front wing oh, we've got the, who's number six that's Checo's front wing with a lot of stickers on the front actually I got some um, I got some information about I read up about all of this um, these are quite interesting Pete first of all there's the FIA action for road safety which is on pretty much every car but um, uh, McLaren have also been given an award as the FIA Institute Achievement of Excellence for Sustainability. And that's kind of linked towards as they've become a sort of green Formula One team. It's weird, isn't it, to think about a team that sort of burns fuel for a living to be to be green. But McLaren have, have actually sort of taken this seriously. I, I assume, I don't really know why. I think it's just, you know, something that is good and they want to do. Um, but they've 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 better they've improved their their carbon output by like almost 10 percent and they're the first f1 team ever to get this which is the certified carbon neutral a carbon neutral formula one team only does four miles to the gallon how can it be carbon neutral but so it turns out that what they've done is actually um invested in some hydroelectric uh, plants and facilities in Brazil and uh, the other one's China, I think, two venues that we go to in Formula One. So, uh, and as well as reducing their CO2 in the factory uh, year on year, if not coming out of the exhaust of the car. So they've got a carbon trust standard and certified carbon neutral, the first ever Formula One team uh, to do that. So there you go. I actually read up on the information. I just thought that was interesting. I'm not going to really uh, get uh, that, let you know these little tidbits anywhere else. So I thought I'd tell you that today. And let's quickly wrap it up because uh, I need to. Um, we talked about Ferrari when Fernando tried to run me over. Toro Rosso, Steve Nielsen has joined the team. Uh, the longtime ex-policeman, I always say, he's been on the F1 show uh, before on this channel and um, he's going to kind of be a, a bit of an enforcer there and and I spoke uh, a while ago about how they've been um, just getting the car to be drivable. I think the two drivers, Ricardo and Verne, felt that 
they didn't have the car underneath them to push, to show, not least Red Bull themselves, that they were capable of challenging, you know, being a top line F1 driver. So that's why they've widened the setup window on this new car, almost as a kind of request from Ricardo and Vern to say, look, guys, you know, we want to be able to show Red Bull that we're the real deal, that we might be able to replace, you know, Mark Webber and, and, and be Sebastian Vettel's teammate in the big sister team. But you haven't given us a car that able to do that. But hopefully with this car, it's got a wider setup window and they will be able to push harder. And finally, Red Bull Racing, uh, Sebastian Vettel himself, no, that's Toro Rosso, so we won't go all the way to Red Bull Racing, so we'll never get there. Um, instead, should we find something interesting to look at? Uh, Italian plates. Funky stairs. Okay, that'll do. I'll just finish on this, the funky stairs at, uh, at uh, Toro Rosso. Um, a lot of... Uh, not, Sebastian Vettel not saying that they've got a lot more work to do. Um, saying that the feeling is good, the balance is good. Uh, they were working a bit on uh, setup today, but they tried to do a race distance, which was interrupted by what they thought was a loss of uh, fuel pressure, uh, which uh, wasn't in the end. And then they went and continued the race distance. For Sebastian came in for a pit stop, and one of the wheels wasn't gone on, did, didn't go on properly. So he went to the end of the pit lane, had to stop at the end of the pit lane. So that brought his race simulation to an end unsuccessfully. So uh, a little bit of reliability, perhaps a bit of a chink in the armor for Red Bull. Otherwise, it all looks good for them. Right, that's it. I will see you tomorrow.